Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here on Sammy Taramina, blog around the OAA, the host of Last Three Brain Cells and the host of Twin Tamiris on Orient Invitation. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on Orient Invitation. A lot to talk about this week. Obviously, we're looking at, of course, we're getting to the Nitty gritty of the season here in February. Here we're in we're into February, um, which means you know the beginning of the postseason. You get to start talking a little bit of postseason stuff. Um, we go on boys first, and then of course we have girls first. So then we have girls. So you know when you look at a lot of things, a lot of things have been occurring. Of course, I mentioned that this week on on Twitter. Of course, now known as X, um, that I want to talk a little bit about is when teams do pictures of themselves on the road. And there's, there's, I mean, like, and, I, and I'm going to bring that up because to me, you know, obviously I get it when you look at teams that have emotional wins, you know what I mean, big wins, you know, I get it. And you want to post a picture, you know, of your teammates winning on the road. Um, now... Others view that as a sign of disrespect, and I think that's something that we got to address here on on this on this podcast. And I think we're going to address that. Why I don't think it's a good idea for opposing teams to take photos of themselves. I mean, of their team winning an emotional game on the opposing floor and on the opposing team's floor, or even on the opposing team's football field. So you know, and. and this is from, you know, prior history, obviously, and I think we gotta we gotta tr- talk about that. And I'll tell you why I have concerns. Why when teams does that, you know, that's gonna that's really dangerous, in my opinion. So we're gonna get we're gonna begin on this here. Obviously, um, you know, we've had some big um big games over the weekend here. Some shockers we're gonna bring up. Obviously, um, Seahorns win against Harper Woods was a shock. Um, 44-28 was that score. Um, we're going to talk that game here and why Seaholm, they do have a chance in their district. Um, but it's that they play like a, um, you know, they, they, their, their style of play, you know, is almost similar to that of Princeton's obviously. Um, but we're going to, we're going to bring that up as well. So let's go to my, let's go to our main story here. Obviously the, um, you know, when I look at a course in girls basketball, and we talk about Troy. Um, we talk about the impressive play of Diamond Prince. Um, last three games, she's averaged over 35, over 37 a game. She's had 40 against Berkeley, had 37 against Troy Athens, um, and 35 um, against um, in another game. So the impression of that, Diamond Prince has been really impressive lately for Coach Laura Guzman. Um, even the game against Troy Athens where, you know, Troy had a really nice lead up by 11 at halftime. And then Athens came back, had to hang on and win that one 54-51. Um, it's the one that has me the most attention because of what they posted on, on Twitter. Or now X. That's what has my attention a little bit. Because of, they posted a photo of their team celebrating. On the Red Hawk logo. And there and there's a reason why I say this is, you know, and to me that looks like, and to me, you know, you could look at it two different ways. One, looking at it from an emotional aspect of it where you win an emotional basketball game. And, you know, winning, you know, and I know they were still bringing a good cause. It was, you know, the pink, their pink game, obviously. Of course, both teams, both coaches wore pink. Um... But when I look at it, when you, when you celebrate on an opposing team's gym or in an opposing team's football field, that's going to rub you the wrong way if you're the opposing team or the team that you ju- that, who just got beat. And, you know, when I look at in Troy's case, you got to play Troy Athens two more times. And most likely you're going to play him in the district. Um, and you're in the same district. And you got a game at Troy. And could you just imagine a Troy Athens winning the Troy and one? 
you know that that photo that Troy did, that's going to be bulletin board material automatically. And you, the reason why I say that is because, you know, you know, and I think, you know, and I hope Troy's ready for that because, you know, Troy's been playing really good basketball lately. I mean, they've been playing really good basketball. I mean, the play of Diamond Prince, obviously, we talked about her. Um, Reagan Ziders had, um, you know, Reagan Ziders had uh, her moment. She had eight points, um, most in the first quarter. Um, but, you know, when I look at, you know, when Prince scores 37 if you're 54, that's never a good stat to have. And then you look at on the other side, you know, Troy, had, we know is a very good team. I mean, so, I mean, obviously they have a very good player in Alex Link and Albie Malone. Um, but that picture that they posted on their Twitter page, that, you know, that to me, I'm, I think it's a sign of, it's a sign of disrespect for a couple of reasons. Because that says, you know, we went into your place and we beat you. And, you know, and now we we have this to remember this, remember it. So that's what I'm saying is when you look at, um, and I was just really disappointed, honestly, that they did that. I was really disappointed because, you know, I mean, if it, it I wouldn't have had an issue if they did that picture on their home floor. I don't have an issue with that. But if it's at if it's at somebody's place, especially on center court or or on the center of their of the opposing team's logo, that's where I have a problem. Because now if it was celebrated, you know what I mean, outside the court, you know, if outside the court in the hallways, that's fine. But but on the court or on the football field, on the center of the 50-yard line or center of the field, that's where I got a problem. Because, one, that's like a sign of disrespect. Two, it's also like a, um, it's kind of like a territorial thing. And we're taught, you know what I mean, MH, the MHA always says good sports are winners. You know what I mean? I remember back in tw back a couple years ago in football when Clarks did. Um, when Clark's went to Lake Orion, um, they had their flag getting ready to, you know, like to, to do like what, um, Oklahoma did against Ohio State, um, to put their flag on the, um, on the, um, Ohio State O. Um, now, thankfully that never materialized. And I know Clark, then coach Kurt Richardson basically screamed at his players, you know, you got to win with class. You win with class and you lose with class. That's how I look at things. That's how sports goes. That's how it has to go. You know, when you see those teams, fo I mean, put photos on the opo on the opposite gym, um, then it gets a little because then it it's bullet to board material for the other side. And I've seen it. I had a discussion about this with Rochester coach Bill Thurston about this. Um, this topic, I mean, I've seen it, I've, I've known it personally, you know, I've seen it happen, you know, even this year, you know, when you look at what happened in Clarkson Lake Orion, both games, it's happened. Um, now where the, where like, you know, Lake Orion wanted to do a photo of, uh, of them winning on the Clarkson C and Clarkson like director Jeff Cozen, um, you know, he got mad about it. Um. But thankfully, the kids didn't do it. And then during the playoff game, Clarkson wanted to celebrate on the Lake Orion LO after winning the district championship. Thankfully for security, um, you know, that never materialized. So you kind of knew what the kids' intentions were, you know, to basically say, you know what, we beat you on your field, you know what I mean? And that's basically... And that's basically where I have an issue with that, you know, and I, I have an issue with, um, you know, with, you know, teams' idea to want to celebrate on the opposing team's home field. And the reason why I say that is because it's a sign of disrespect. And, and that's honesty right there because I've known it from personal experience, you know, and I've known it, you know what I mean? And also, it, it, will, it, it, rile, it will rile up the other team. You know, considering, obviously, you look at, 
you know, and, it's, and in Troy's case, you got to play Troy Atkins twice. Most likely going to be in the postseason as well. You got one more league game against him. Um, I know Rochester has a habit of doing it. Um, but you know, so we so we had a chat about it. So, but at the end of the day, you know what I mean. You won. You got to win with class and got to lose with class, and that's really how I look at it. And you know, that's how I look at things. Is you win with class, you lose with class. You know, just don't do anything extracurricular like you know I mean doing that because it's gonna rile the team up, the opposing team up. You know, especially you got to play them again. Or, you know what I mean? You know, and especially, you know what I mean? I mean, cause, and there's, there's a lot of reasons why. And I think, you know, honestly, you know, that it's not a good idea. And it goes for all, it goes for parents, it goes for, for players, it goes for coaches. You know, it's never a good idea to do that. So, if it's at home, if you win a big game on your home floor, you can celebrate that with, you can do that. You can definitely do a, fic, a picture of your team, you know, celebrating on your home floor. Just not on the, just not on the opposite team's floor because it's going to get the other team riled up. It's going to get them motivated, you know, especially because they're going to remember it. You know what I mean? If it's not, if it's not this year or when you get to play them again. So, you know, so it's not wise, I don't think, you know what I mean, to, really do that and you know and what i saw with the troy troy athens game um celebrating um with, with troy celebrating on athens's um red hawk logo um i would not have recommended that one bit because of the fact that you have to play them again um they're going to remember that that's going to be bulletin board material um you know when they play so you know, so if I'm Troy Athens coach, J.C. Clump, you know what I mean? I'm getting that picture, and you know what? I'm I'm motivating your team, you know what I mean, to get them ready when they go down to Troy to take on Troy. Um, That's just like a, um, you know, I mean, like, that's going to be a motivational factor, you know, to say, you know what? We can go and beat these guys, you know what I mean? Like, and, you know, and, you know, sometimes, you know what I mean? And it happened last year, you know, Several teams, of course, they won the first meeting, but the other team got them back in the in the next meeting. So, you know, so I wouldn't recommend. Um, I would definitely not recommend um, parents or students or teams. I would not recommend um, to post um, to post photos of of your team winning on an opposite gym because, you know. There's a lot of emotions involved in the basketball game, and you know, and, and it's a sign of disrespect. You know what I mean to the op the opposing team. So, you know, so that's my take on it. I wouldn't recommend it to, you know, and that's my take on that. Um, I've seen it before, personal experience. I've seen it, um, but you tend to like you look at the word good sports or winners. Um, you know, and obviously you win with class and you lose with class. And I think really that's where um that's where I'm trying to get to at with the um you know, honestly with that with the word good sports are winners, you know what I mean? And they always say that, you know, the MHA does, you know what I mean? So you know, so I, it makes a lot of sense here to um you know you know, so my recommendation to parents and to and the student athletes everywhere just don't post photos on the opposing team's floor. Um, you can do it on your home floor, that's fine, but not after, not do it on the um, opposing floor. So that's just my take on that. So we'll see what happens. I mean, like, um, but um, but I just just had to get my my um, six cents in here, obviously, with what's been going on, um, and, and especially in this world of social media. You know, you're looking at, um, in this world of social media, you're just, you know what I mean? Like, you know, posting it to the opposite team, never, I mean, up and posing it on your Twitter page, um, never a good idea because the opposing team's going to see it and that's going to open up more motivation and we know how that's going to go. So we'll see what happens, um, going forward, um. Let's go now to some basketball news here, obviously. Um, 
Looking at the week, obviously, we're going to talk Seaholm. Um, Seaholm's been a really weird team to figure out. And I think this has been interesting because, you know, Max Lashley's a solid player. Finley Sparby's a good player. Jacob Druland, Jacob Druland he's not a bad player. Um, for them to go down in the Wayne County, in the Harper Woods, and hold that team... That pioneer team who's got Isaiah Lewis, um, you know, to, to 28 points, that says something. Now, Seaholm plays a really different brand of basketball defensively. I mean, they are a team that likes to play the Princeton-style offense. They like to slow you down, take you out of your element. And, you know, and you look at what Seaholm's done, they know how to, they run their system really well. I mean, they don't turn it over a lot. They don't, um, they're very disciplined with their scheme. And that's a credit coach, um, Mike, Coach Greg DeGeter. Um, he is a really good coach. I mean, despite the record they have right now, I mean, they have a, um, you know, they're struggling a little bit right now. Um, they lost a lot of talent from a year ago. Um, but, you got to look at, obviously, the players they got. I mean, like, Julia, Drew Land's really, really ha has had some moments. He played, he's played some good basketball. Will Soderall, um, he's, he's been playing really well, rebounding the ball for Seaholm. Um, you know, Mash Lasky's an energy player. Um, John Chinosis is a very um, energetic player. He can rebound, shoot you three if you need it. Um... So when I look at Seaholm, I mean, this is, yes, I mean, like, they they run their system really well. And, you know, if they have ish and to knock off a team in Harper Woods in their gym, you know, they, they Harper Woods is a team that really likes to go up and down the floor. Um, That really says something, you know, with what they did. Um. They caused a little bit of a dent in the um, in the white race. Um, obviously, when you look at, you know, with Troy, Troy right now leads the league right now, and they look really good to win that to, to win the white title this year. Um, Lake Orion right now, I would say right now is the second best team in that division. Um, just with the way that that team's played, um, you know, you really look at the Dragons. I mean, like when they bent when they. When they went back home, um, they've won two, um, they've won three straight. Um, one of them was against Southfield, um, Arts and Tech, when that was a makeup game. But when you really look at Lake Orion, um, I really think when you look at the Dragons right now, if I had to say who's the second best team in that division right now behind Troy, if it was Lake Orion, Troy, Athens, um, Harper Woods, or Farmington, I think Lake Orion is because of. You know, you look at what the what the Dragons have. Um, you know, Zach Parks has been a really nice addition for this team. I mean, you clearly look at what he has done. Um, he can he can rebound, he can score, he can defend, he can take charges. I mean, he can shoot threes. I mean, he is a complete player. I think colleges need to start looking at this young man. I think he's really good. And you pair him up with Ryan Walsh, who's only a sophomore. And Ryan Walsh has had some moments where he's looked really good. Um, Quay Fly, I'll tell you what, Quay Fly's been playing really well for this team. Um, so when you really look at Lake Orion, they're getting contributions everywhere. You know, they're getting contributions everywhere. And you look at this Dragon team, they could be, a, I think there's a reason why I think they're the second best team in the white behind Troy. Um, Troy Athens, obviously people are going to say, well, um, you know, they got a case as well. Yeah, they do. I mean, like, don't get me wrong. I mean, they do got a case. Um, you know, Finley Sparby, I'm oh, sorry, um, Emmanuel Robinson, um, um, I mean, you got Griffin LeBay there. Um, you got, um, Troy, a I mean, Troy Athens, you know, they're still a very good team. They are still a very, very good team. Don't get me wrong. I think the Red Hawks, you know, they just had the, they just had those two rough games against Lake Orion. I'm curious to see how they do against Harper Woods because that's going to be really interesting to see. 
Now, in Harper Woods' case, they're coming off a win against Farmington, but we talked earlier about that loss to Seahome. Um, the Farmington game was 72-65. So, when you look at Harper Woods, um, they like, you know, they like to go up and down. So does Farmington. They like to go up and down as well. So, you know, so we'll see how that one goes there. Um, you know, Bloomby Hills has really been struggling right now. South at Arson Tech has also been struggling. Um, Bloomby Hills is a very young team. They got Deron Mason, Philip Muhammad, um, Reggie Hitton, when, when healthy, he, he's a very good player. They got a three very, very good young, talented players for Coach Brian Canfield. Um, you know, to work with, especially hanging the next year. And they're going to be with you for the next two years. Um, so, Bloomby Hills, their future is bright for them going forward. Um, a t we don't know where their mindset is, um, but we'll see. So, when I look at the white right now, I still think it's Troy, then Lake Orion, um, Troy, Athens, um, Harper Woods, Farmington, um, Bloomby Hills, and then Southfield Arts and Tech. Um, that's my take on the um, on the white. Um, the blue, it's going to go down to Berkeley's a hard team to figure out because I can't figure Berkeley out, especially after the loss of Stony Creek. Now, Stony Creek's a team that's been really funny lately. I mean, they've been, they're a team that I think, honestly, when you look at the Cougars, here's a team that early in the year, really struggled. They really struggled. And then to see what they did against Berkeley, then you say to yourself, wait a minute here. Where's this been all year long? I mean, yes, this, it's true that they need Trey Walker on the floor. And that's honesty. They need Trey Walker on the floor. Stony Creek's been playing better basketball lately. And that's a good sign for Coach Jeff Owen. That is a good sign for him. And that team is they're starting to play their best ball in February. Now, is it going to now the league race for them? is too late for them there. But, you know, for them to at least get some competence heading in the districts, you know, that's going to say a lot. Um, You know, and when you look at that district, I mean, Adams, I think is the team to beat in that district. Adams is honestly, Adams is the team to beat in that district. I mean, Utica Eisenhower, they do have a track record. Utica, I can't trust this team one bit at all. I can't trust Utica. Because, yes, they're a senior heavy team, but they really haven't been tested. Romeo, I can't trust Romeo at all. I really can't. Um, You know, even if they've had some good wins, but I, honestly, bottom line, I can't trust this team at all. I, I just can't. Um... And in Utica, I absolutely can't trust. I mean, and then of course Rochester. We know Rochester. Um, I mean, like I, I mean, like, and I watched him on film against Pontiac and Rochester. They're not very sound defensively at all. I mean, they're not really. They don't communicate well. And I saw that game against Pontiac where they just, they just had some struggles, especially with them. Um, you know, they, they really struggled, especially against some Jeremiah Claudio um, and Travion Peters. Um, Peters had a big game for Pontiac in that game. Pontiac, to me, is a wild card in this whole thing. He really is. So, to pair him and Jeremiah Claudio, um, they got others as well. I mean, like, um, there's a couple of players I like on this Pontiac team. I mean, there's a couple of them. They got height. They got size. Um, just had a rough start early, but it bounced back really nicely. Um, Pontiac, to me, they're scary in this division. They're very scary. Now, when I look at the district, you know, could they upset somebody? Yeah, they could. But when I look at that district, I mean, like, they did have a win, they do have a win against Avondale earlier in the year. And that says something right there. They can beat Avondale. Um, I don't know if they match up to Lake Orion. I don't know if they match up to Clarkson or Waterford Mott. I don't know if they do. Um, but, but, um, 
otherwise, you know, Pontiac, they're a scary team. They're really scary. And they're my dark horse right now. I mean, they gave Oxford everything they could handle earlier in the year. Um, Oxford's got to go to Pontiac. Um, and then you look at Avondale, who I think right now is the favorite in this division, considering where they're at. Um, I think Avondale, you know, they're red hot right now. I mean, they're playing really good basketball right now. Um, and then there's Oxford. When you look at Oxford, um, obviously Jake Champagne, everybody looks at Jake Champagne, you know what I mean? But when he has help, Coach Joe Fed's team is really dangerous. <laughs> and honestly, when you look at Oxford, you know, the Wildcats, you know, a lot of people look at Champagne and say, okay, it's, it's a one-man show. It's not necessarily the case. You have both Katie brothers. Um, you have Luke Stofan who's really, um, I think Luke Stofan's really played well. I watched your game against Royal Oak, and I'll tell you what, I mean, like, they know how to win ugly games. They know how to. <clears throat> I mean, and I'm looking at Royal Oak. Royal Oak, you're 2-7 and seven your last nine games. 2-7. and seven. <laughs> It kind of was like, when you look at Royal Oak, they have a great start to the year, and then they start and they fall off. I don't know what's going on with that team. I really don't know. It's when their shots don't fall, bad things happen. That's how you describe Coach Aaron Smith's team. Is, you know, Canton Clark, when he has a bad game, he struggles. When um Nick Hoffman struggles. You know, when those two guys struggle, usually that Roy Oak struggles. So when I look at when I look at Royal Oak in their case, um, you know, they're they're they got some problems right now. They got some big, big problems right now that they gotta figure out. I mean, I know Ferndale University's also struggling as well. I mean, they're struggling as well. But when I look at the, the and, and of course they already talk Rochester, of course. You know, when they need Max Mo on the floor. They need him on the floor. Um, that is that's clear as day. And you know, and, and a technical foul changed that game against Pontiac. So when I look at the blue division right now, and it's pretty easy to say where I think the division right now is Avondale's division to lose. I mean they beat Berkeley. Um, they have a win against Oxford. They still got to go to Oxford, which is going to be interesting. Um, they got, I mean, like, I know they got to play Stoney. They got to play um, Rochester. Um, and, um, right now, Coach Jared Thomas's team is in the driver's seat in that division. Um, and then who do you think I would say between Oxford and Berkeley? People would say... You know, Berkeley, they got that win against Oxford earlier in the year. Um, but I'll tell you what, I think if I, I have to trust Oxford right now over Berkeley. Because I don't know what Berkeley team's gonna show up. I don't know what type of what type of team I don't know what type of Berkeley team's gonna show up. I, I really don't. Whereas when I know with Oxford is I know what I'm getting with Oxford. I just don't know what I'm getting with Berkeley. So I would say right now I have to trust Oxford right now over Berkeley. Um, you know, then I have Berkeley, um, and then I have, um, Pontiac, Pontiac, obviously my fourth best team in that division, then I think Stony Creek, I would say right now, Stony Creek, they're playing good, ba they're playing much better basketball right now, I mean, I'm, it's, I'm surprised it took them this long, you know what I mean, to, you know, start getting, you know what I mean, and obviously, when you look at Stony Creek situation, Year two, you always expect that transition year, that turnaround year. And it's kind of surprised that, you know, it hasn't happened with Stony Creek. It's starting to click a little bit, which is a good sign for them um, going forward there. So we'll see how that one goes. And then you have um, Rochester and Ferndale U right now as basically the two, um, the two teams in the bottom right now, the blue division right now. So... 
you know, that's my take on that division. So when I look at the blue, um, Avenue Ops is still a team to beat. Um, I would say actually put Royal Oak, then Rochester, then actually, and then um, Ferndale U. So, so my division right now, I would say Avondale, Oxford, Berkeley, Pontiac, Stony Creek, um, Royal Oak, Rochester, and Ferndale U. That's my that's my eight right now in the blue right now as we speak. And then the red. Um, Clarkson getting two big wins. Um, I'm glad they took my call out to heart. They won two straight. Um, knocked off Troy Athens and Rochester. Um, both convincing fashions. Um, we'll see what type of team they are when they get back in the league play. Take on Groves. Of course, Groves looks very beatable. Um, when I look at Groves, um, you know, um, I mean, like, um, you know, you look at John Simpson, he's, I mean, he's, he's injured with a foot injury. Um, and then you have, um, you have, you have Gibson, um, Gibson, we know what he can bring. Um, what he did against Seaholm was just insane. He and Paul Hubbard combined for 40 of their 56, um, on Saturday against Seaholm. That's insane. I mean, most of their shots they made were from three point range. And that says a lot. Um, considering where Coach Mark West team's been. I mean, they had a they got a big one against Adams, which is huge. Um so with Groves right now, they're adjusting to life in the red pretty well. I mean, like, Paul Hubbard's really stepped up his game um to help with Josh Simpson. Um I mean with Josh Gibson. Um you really look at, of course, the um, the Simpson injury. That's huge right now. That is huge right now because that takes away Birch the rebounding threat. Um, so they're going to have to make shots um, if Groves wants to move forward to win games. So really, that's where the case I have with Groves is can they make shots, um, especially in high percentage. Now, they're heading to Clarkston next, which is, di which is difficult. It's a difficult matchup for Groves um, going to Clarkston uh, to take on a Wolves team that really, um, you know, a Wolves team that I think's really started to get back to the thick of it a little bit um, in the, um, you know, but I'm curious to see where Clarkson goes. I mean, like, you know, but they got that big win for them, and that's a big deal. Um, you know, if Clarkson can start turning things around, and they've started to get some progress about that, um, getting a big win against Troy Athens, and then also going to Rochester and getting a big win against the Falcons. So, you know, Clarkston, you know what I mean? It's, you know, they're just going through a lot right now. So, really, that's the take on the Wolves um, right now as we speak. Um, and then Adams, of course, Adams had that tough loss to, um, you know, two Groves. So, I think they're fine. Um, Peter Kardashian, William G., um, Trenton Lagarde. Um, I think Coach Isaiah Novak's team's going to be fine. Um, but we'll see. We will see. Um, and then of course we, um, I got to talk for no West Bloomfield. Um, if you're coach Juan Rickman, you just got to be sick to your stomach. Um, how do you blow an 18 point lead against West Bloomfield and West Bloomfield? I got to give coach, um, Arnett Jordan a lot of credit here. He didn't, this team didn't panic. They didn't, they didn't go for, they didn't go three point happy because normally when teams are down like 18, you know what I mean? Or 20 points, they try to get back at it with the three ball. Um, they just followed their game plan to a T, got that deficit down, took a lead late in the, I mean, took a lead in the middle of the fourth quarter. Um, they did not panic. And that's a credit to Coach Arnett Jordan and his staff and his team. Drew Wilson had a big game for them. Um, so when you look at West Bluefield, you know, they've been through the ringer. They've been through the storm. I mean, they've been a team that's hanging by the moment. When you come back from 18 points down and win, that's a confidence booster for you. That really is. Um, and when you look at them, um, and in Ferndale's case, if you're Coach Juan Rickman, 
you're going to say this. You can't afford, you know, to lay off the gas, to lay off the gas against that team, especially when you come to the postseason. You're looking at Warren Lincoln staring you in the face. And you're looking at Detroit Pershing possibly staring you at the face. <laughs> so if you're Coach Rickman, you got to you gotta say, look, guys, when we're up 20, you can't just stop playing. You know, and that's what happened. I felt like at times Ferndale stopped playing. They turned it over carelessly, and look what happened. Look what happened to that team. That's what happens when you turn the ball over, you know, and you give up easy baskets on the other side. So, and I know Rickman's got a young team, but let's not forget, Rickman's been here before. He knows this. Last season, Ferndale was in a rut. They were in a rut last year. Struggled early. Made a part of January. Early part of February. They struggled. And then when they got their act together, look what happened. They won a Division II state championship. So Rickman's been here before. So I think Ferndale, you know, I mean, they've been here before. So I, I think it's similar. I think it's really similar to where they're at right now. Um, and then we got North Farmington, um, the Raiders, um, coach Todd Negotian got his 200th career win as a head coach. Congratulations to coach Negotian. Uh, North Farmington had no issue with Oak Park. Oak Park's really struggling. Honestly, Oak Park is really struggling. I mean, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I mean, yeah, I'll be at North Farms. It's a very good team. But Oak Park, honestly, they're struggling mightily. They are struggling real mightily right now. So when I look at the red right now, I would have to say, um, I would have to say North Farmington, West Bloomfield, Ferndale, Adams, Clarkston, um, Groves, Oak Park. So that's my take on the red is I think in that order right now, the way that each team has been playing. Um, I think obviously with the way North Farmington has been playing, um, I'll be curious to see how North Farmington and West Bloopia does. That should be a really interesting game over at North um, between those two teams. But I, I just think North Farmington right now, the way that they're playing, they're, they're going to be a tough out for anybody. So... We'll see what happens there with North Farmington um, going forward there. So it'll be interesting to see how that one goes, and we'll see what happens. Okay, now let's go from let's go from boys basketball. Let's go to girls. Um, obviously, we talked um, in the gold. Um, you kind of you look at that division and say to yourself, you know, Ferndale is clearly the team in that division because of. You look at the um, the play of their three, of their big three. I know they've toughened up their non-conference. Um, you know, they get themselves ready for the postseason. Um, you know, they're coming off. I mean, I mean, like, they're probably going to use the league as probably like, um, you know, like to get themselves ready for the postseason. Um, but I'm not sure if playing those type of teams are going to get them better. Um, knowing Coach Keith Paris, um, It'll be interesting to see what he does this offseason. Um, I would expect him to to ask to move up maybe at least to the white. You know what I mean? Where I could I could see Ferndale in the white next season. I really do. I mean, don't get me wrong. I just think that um with the talent they got there, the only issue I have with Ferndale is gonna be is, you know, their depth, program strength is an, is a big question mark for them. Um you know, can they build their sub varsity programs? Can they build them there? And that's the question. I know that, you know, I know that um, Paris is trying to build this program very similar to that of Juan Rickman's program with the boys program. Of course, Rickman's the athletic director at Ferndale. Um, so when I look at the, the gold right now, Ferndale's clearly to me the best team. Avondale is clearly the second best team in that division. Um, Pontiac, I would say, is third. Um, even though they're starting to struggle again a little bit. 
Oak Park is starting to struggle a little bit. I think Oak Park, I mean, they're they're still a very young team. Um, and then far, and then you look at Ferndale University. Um, <sighs> I don't know what to say. I mean, like, you know, they're they're really struggling right now. I mean, you know, and I and I feel bad for the players. I feel bad for for Coach Brianna Rowe. Um, you know, I know it's a process and all that, but you know, I mean, like when you're getting blown out, I mean, like it's got to be hard on you. It, it's got to be really, really hard on you just to see what's going on and. The fact you want to score in single digits, you're getting the running clock against you, that's never a good feeling. I mean, that really isn't. Um, you just gotta look at the morale of your team and say, look, you know what I mean? We just gotta we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna be back, you know, we're gonna be fine. Stay positive. That's what I would say right now to the girls of Fernell University right now is to stay positive. You know what I mean? You know, you're going through a rut right now. You're going through a lot. And, you know, that's life of playing varsity basketball is you there's like it's peaks and valleys I mean so we'll see what happens I mean so when I look at the division in the gold um I mean it's Ferndale Avondale um Pontiac Oak Park Ferndale you I mean that's really what it is right now in that division um blue we talked about Troy Troy Athens um Adams has been struggling a little bit, but they did get a nice win against Farmington. Um, so when I look at um, Adams, I mean, like it, they've got a they they haven't been consistent, which has been interesting to see. Really interesting to see how they just haven't been consistent. Um, so when I look at this division, Southfield Arts and Tech lost two games this week. I mean, they had that win again. They had that win at um in the um Detroit Public School League showcase, but there. But the two losses in league kind of opens the division up a little bit. You kind of say now who is the favorite in that division? Is it Troy? Is it Berkeley? Is it Troy Athens? I mean, is it Southfield Arson Tech? I mean, like. When you really look at the blue right now, and I'm looking at it from a, from a perspective here to say, who is playing really well right now? And right now, the team I have to trust right now is Troy. Because, obviously, Diamond Prince has gone nuts. Um, Reagan Zider, um, you know, she her defense has been really good lately for, for the Colts. Um, you know, they have that win against Troy Athens, which is huge. Um, now the the shenanigans after the game, I'm really really upset about. Talked about that earlier in the podcast. Um, but um, when you look at the product that Coach Chris, that Coach Laura Guzman has, um, Troy has really they've been through a storm and now they're getting out of that storm. And if you're, and that's a good sign, and that's a lot of, and that's gaining confidence. So when you really look at Troy's situation, I mean, yes, ride Diamond Prince. You know, you got to ride Diamond Prince. Um, you got to find, like, your interior play. You got to find who is going to be that girl who breaks out on the interior game. I mean, like, cause you obviously got Olivia Sprangler. You got Regan Zider. You have Diamond Prince. Here's the thing. All three of my guards. Kelsey Block's a solid defender. Um, but who's that big in the interior? Is it Ali Mantuza? Is it Carly Hagenbottom? I mean, there's so many questions in the in in the interior that I think for tro- for Coach Guzman to figure out. I know Guzman wants to go more that four guard one big set, which is really difficult if you're a big. Um, but when you look at the way that Prince has been playing, right, the way that Zider's been playing. I mean, and then the way that Sprangler's been playing. I mean, like, you know, right now, if I have to say who the best team right now in the division is, I think right now it's Troy. And they have a win against Berkeley that also proves it. Berkeley's been playing really good basketball, too. I really like the Bears right now. I really like the way that Mavi Nolan's played. I really like the way that 
that Coach Clay Shaver's got that team going. Um, they got a machine going down there at Berkeley. They do. Um, but I really like how Berkeley has been playing. I, I, just, I just think that the Bears are a team that they're dangerous. They're really dangerous. And I know they still got to play Troy Athens, um, which I think it'll be really interesting. Um, be a good game, I think, between those two teams. Um, and then you have, um, and then you have, you know, Southfield we talked about. Like I said, if you shut down Southfield's offensive threats, if you have a team that plays legitimate good defense against them, you're going to beat Southfield. I mean, that's really <coughs> no ifs, ands, or buts. You look at those games that Southfield lost. You know, Livonia Stevenson, they played really good defense. We know about West Bluefield. And then in their two league losses to Berkeley and Troy Athens, Ber I mean, like a bolt, I mean, Southfield Arson Tech, I mean, they couldn't figure out neither team's defensive capabilities. And, of course, both those two teams, they could play with A&T and go in a high-scoring game. Because A&T, let's not forget, this team defensively, you can't trust A&T defensively. You really can't. So, we'll see. So, when I look at the blue right now, I would say it's Troy, Berkeley, Troy Athens. Um, and then we have, um, and then, um, because I think Farmington's the worst team in that division. Adams is probably like the second worst in that division. Um, and then, um, so I think at the end of the day here, um, you know, when you look at that division, Troy right now looks to be the team to beat. Um, Berkeley's there. I would say Troy Athens and Safi Arts and Tech and Adams and then, um, and then, and then Farmington. So that's, the order of that division right now. So we'll see what happens. Um, let's go to the white. Um, when I look at the white and <laughs> Harper Woods controls their destiny right now in the white. Their big win against Seaholm earlier in the week. Um, and it was a and it wasn't even close. Um, which was shocking. I think it was sixty um three thirty seven. That was shocking. Um. And then you look at what Seaholm did against Booby Hills at LCA. Um, basically, you know, exposing Booby Hills' um, guard situation. Booby Hills really struggling because of that guard situation. Um, that's really where I think could be Booby Hills' biggest problem is the guards. I mean, that's, that's the problem that Booby Hills has been facing almost all year. And they do have, they did have an ACL injury in one of their guards, which was huge. And no coach Kristen Massey, I think she'll get, she'll get it figured out. I think she will. Um, when I look at this division, Harper Woods right now leads the division. But what, but a team that I think could give Harper Woods big, big, big problems is Royal Oak. Royal Oak, they got everybody back. Um, they've been through the wars against Harper Woods. They beat Harper Woods twice last year. Actually, they split with them last year. Um, so when I look at, I mean, Harper Woods still has to play them twice. So this is going to be interesting to see when those two teams meet because, you know, Harper Woods right now has the driver's seat. Roy Oaks got that loss to Seahawks. Um, which is right now killing them at the moment. Um, North Farmington, I can't trust that team. I really can't. I mean, with the way that that team's been, um, it's hard to trust them, especially with everything that's been going on surrounding that program. Um, Groves has been up and down. Um, looked okay against Harper Woods despite the four-point loss. I mean, put 53 points up. Sierra Rocco's a really good player for them. I really like J.C. Roy a lot on that team as well. I think she's a talented player. Um, so when I look at Groves, Groves is an up and down team. Um, <coughs> see home, we know what they have. And they got their guards are solid. I mean, I'll tell you what, I like I like Coach Chris Manchester's team. I really do. Um, they're they're a talented group. Um, 
Roy Oak, we know what they got. Harper Woods, we know what they got. Um, so when I look at this division right now, and, you know, and obviously, you know, look at the situation of each team right now. I would say, even though Harper Woods leads the division, I think Roy Oak is better than both Seaholm and Harper Woods. For a couple reasons. Experience matters. Experience matters in that type of game. They really, they do, I mean, like, um, they, they, um, they have a ton of experience. Um, so we'll see. I mean, we'll see. I mean, give credit where credit's due. Um, so, but I think Royal Oak right now is better than Harper Woods and Seaholm, honestly. Then I would say, um, then I would say, um, I mean, I think right now, Bloompia Hills, they're struggling right now. Um, then Groves to North Farmington. So that's my take in the, um, in the white right now with really everything that's been going on with that, with, um, with the white right now. And then the red, um, uh, West Bloomfield, um, they've been clicking on all cylinders, but they played Anthony Wayne, Ohio and ended up losing that one 71 59, which was shocking. Cause I watched that game on film and I said to myself, I mean, what's going on with West Bloomfield? I mean, they, I mean, they haven't, you know, albeit Anthony Wayne, Ohio is a very good team. Don't get me wrong. I mean, the generals are, they got a heck of a, they're, they're big as good. I mean, they got, they got a good team. I mean, I think they're the ones that tested West Bloom, but probably the toughest out of anybody. And that says a lot, um, considering, you know, where they're at right now. And obviously with West Bloomfield, um, we'll see. I mean, we'll see. I mean, I mean, obviously you have the Davis sisters, Kendall Hendricks, um, Sheridan Beal, um, I think when you look at Harper Woods, uh, at West Bloomfield, um, they, I mean, like, there's some kinks in the armor a little bit with Coach Joe McAllister's team. Um, so we'll see what happens. I mean, like, but I still think West Bloomfield's the team to beat, um, in that, um, they're still the team to beat. So we'll see what happens there, um, going forward with them. So we'll see how that one goes. Um. And then you have, um, and then you have, um, Stony Creek right now. I mean, like, they don't look as good as people think they do. I mean, yes, they had the tough loss to West Booba, and they did not look very good against Lake Orion. Um, so, but when I look at Stony Creek, you know, Sarah LaPrairie has to be the key for them, um, going forward. I mean, yes, Izzy Avaj is a solid big, um, but Sarah LaPrairie is the key for that team going forward, and I think she will be for them going forward, so we'll see how that goes, um, Clarkston, obviously, Eliana Roback, Brooklyn Colbert, um, you know, Emily Valencia, Eliam Moger. um, they have to, I mean, like, they're, to me, I still got concerns about this team on the road, um, you know, and I think that's a good question mark for Coach Aaron Good now. I mean, like, with young teams, they do much better at home than they are on the road. Um, if you have a veteran team on the road, you have a lot more faith than that. Um, Rochester, we know about Max and Robinson. Um, if they get guard play, I'll tell you what. I mean, like, they got something. Um, and they've gotten that lately. Um... And then, of course, and then there's Lake Orion. I mean, Lake Orion, um, they're struggling right now. Um, they, bottom line, that team can't score. I mean, that's a problem. Early in the year, Lake Orion was was really good. I mean, on all sides of the ball, sharing the ball, um, playing really well. And then when they get the league play, they just haven't been the same team since. But the last three games, Lake Orion's really started to find themselves again a little bit. Um, despite the losses, um, Izzy Walensky has to score for this team to be successful. Um, Ellie Britt has to score. Um, Nevea Wood has to score. So if you're in Charlotte Peplowski, she has to score. So if you're Coach Bob Bridges, 
you know, you got to find ways for those four girls to score, especially Walensky. Um, if, if, Walens if the Lake Orion can find that team that played in December, then I think they could get back into this, um, get back in the thick of it, you know, and then get ready for the postseason. So, but when I look at Lake Orion, their goals are still there. I mean, you know, a district title still there. I mean, I know that, you know, for for Coach Bridges and them um, and the Dragons, I think they're fine. I'm not, I mean, yeah, they're struggling right now, but I think they're starting to find themselves a little bit more. This team has to be a defensive first team. And for Lake Orion to be successful, oh, Lake Orion traditionally, Coach Bridges' bread and butter has always been defense. And if Lake Orion can commit themselves to defense, then I think they're going to be just fine. I mean, the offense will come in time, but they've got to be committed on the defensive side of the ball. Defense is the one you can control, not the offensive side, because, you know, you're going to miss some shots. If you miss shots, a lot of great looks and all that, you know what I mean? You just got to keep playing, you know what I mean? So that's what I would say right now with Lake Orion. So when I look at the division right now, I would say, and then there's Oxford. Um, Oxford, it's been up and down, obviously. Um, Having that big win at Lake Orion was huge for them. Um, obviously, Allison Huffstedler. Um, Mia Champagne's been playing good basketball. Peyton Richter's been up and down. Um, but it'll be interesting to see what Oxford has um, going forward. So when I look at the division right now, um, I would say the red right now is West Bloomfield, Stony Creek, um, I would say Clarkston right now, then Oxford, then Rochester, then Lake Orion. Um, now this could change. So we'll see what happens going forward, um, in that division. So a lot to talk about, um, uh, these next few weeks as we head forward, especially in the world of girls basketball. So we'll see what happens going forward. All right, everybody, I'm going to sign off here. Make sure you follow the blog at Saginaw Bay. 4650 at blogspot.com for the latest information. Um, we will be on air here on Wednesday for the um, ON TV Fish Drive to talk about with my co-host Ian Locke. We're going to talk about um, basketball districts, especially involving Lake Orion and Oxford for both boys and girls basketball. Um, and also news around the league, what's been going on. So we'll see what happens going forward there. All right, man, we're signing off here. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you all next week. I'll see you all on Wednesday, everybody. Take care, and I'll see you, see you then. God bless all.